Wait, so Noah gets drunk, gets naked, and then curses his innocent grandson? That doesn't make sense. One of the oddest stories that you'll find in the Bible is the account of Noah. Remember, God sees Noah as a righteous person, someone who has trusted God to take him, his wife, his three sons and their wives in the ark and then be the reason why mankind would survive. And so God obviously thinks uh, more of Noah than he does pretty much everyone else because he kills everyone else. The problem happens, though, this odd account that happens in Genesis 9 where Noah gets drunk and then his son Ham comes in and sees him naked. But Ham is not cursed. It's his grandson who's cursed. And the next question that arises, though, would why would you curse anyone because of them seeing you naked after you got drunk? So let's go to Genesis 9 and let's look at the account because there's some things that we need to go ahead and flesh out to make sure that we don't come away with the wrong understanding of what's actually happening. And so in Genesis 9:20 it says that Noah began farming and planted a vineyard. He drank of the vine, of the wine, I'm sorry, and became drunk and uncovered himself inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Sham and Jepheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were turned away. So they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine, he knew what his youngest son had done. And this is where it gets really interesting. Verse 25. So he said, curse be Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be to his brothers. He also said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Sham and let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Jephthah and let him dwell in the tents of Sham and let Canaan be his servants. So a couple of questions. One, what exactly did Ham or Canaan do to cause them to be cursed? Why would you curse him? What was the big deal to see someone naked? Was it that unusual or even that bad to see someone naked in the first place? There are a lot of theories that have come out as to what actually happened at that time. One, did Ham, when he saw his father, did he do something sexually? Or this whole term uncovered his father's nakedness. Does that mean that he slept with Noah's wife? Uh, is that why he says curse Canaan? Because Canaan is actually Ham's child by Noah's wife. And there's a reason why some might come up with this. And it's found in Leviticus 18, 6. Let's go there briefly. He says, none of you shall approach any blood relative of his to uncover. There's that word to uncover his nakedness. I am the Lord. You should not uncover the nakedness of your father. That is the nakedness of your mother. And so here you might get the idea that this is stating that if you uncover the nakedness of your mother, that's the same as uncovering the nakedness of your father, which means you slept with your mother. The same thing is also stated again. She is your mother. You are not to uncover her nakedness. You should not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is your father's nakedness. And so there's a parallel that's being drawn between uh, uncovering the nakedness of your father to mean uncovering the nakedness of that person's wife and sleeping with that person's wife or that person's mother. But let's go back to this particular passage. We can pretty much uh, rule this out. When some make this statement, they also throw in the possibility of there being some sort of homosexual relationship between Ham uh, taking advantage of his father. Uh, but the problem is the Hebrew expression that says Ham saw his father's nakedness. That, that is in verse 22. He was not involved with Noah sexually. And the reason is because the word that's used for uncovered is not in the causative form. Instead, it is in the reflexive form. Let me go to and show you this. Here we have in Genesis 9, 20, let's put it back on the screen. It says, he drank of the wine and became drunk. Now this word where it says he uncovered himself, this word that's used here, the word for galab means to uncover, but this is in the reflexive form, meaning that Noah uncovered himself, So, which is why it's also stated this way in English. So in this case, unlike in Leviticus, it is not the person uncovering someone else. In this case, Noah uncovered himself. Another theory is that Canaan was there. And so because Canaan was there, who also participated in this, in this mockery, apparent mockery of Noah, that he instead curses Canaan. We don't know the full story. And so it'd be kind of fruitless and pointless to try to speculate as to what it was. And sometimes they're even outlandish speculations that we just simply don't have any biblical support for. But we do know that mockery of someone's nakedness, especially the father as well as the mother, is not acceptable. As a matter of fact, Deuteronomy 27, 16 says, cursed is he who dishonors his father or mother and all the people shall say amen. And so in this case, clearly 
he is dishonoring not his mother, but his father. In Genesis 9:1, it says that God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So Noah could not come back and curse what God had already blessed. And so the question will still remain for some, why curse Canaan instead of Ham? But again, as we just stated, you could not curse Canaan or could not curse Ham because he was already blessed. Now, something else that we need to also bring up is this, that some might bring up that, is it possible that Ham caused his father to get drunk? Well, uh, that would be kind of difficult to state, although it is a possibility. And Habakkuk 2.15 says, woe to you who make your neighbors drink, who mix in venom, even to make them drunk so as to look at their nakedness. Is that is that a possibility? It's a possibility, but probably not because, again, uh, when we go back to the passage, let's go to it again. He says that he drank. So this is Noah who drank of the wine and became drunk and he uncovered himself. And so probably the best way to take this is that Ham comes in and he sees his father's nakedness and then he mocks his father's nakedness. And so the difference is, though, the two other brothers, they come in and they honor their father by walking backwards so as not to see him and then covering him up. So now thinking about the reason why Canaan gets cursed uh, might also have something to do with the fact that maybe Noah has already seen a pattern in Canaan as well as probably in his father. His father is maybe prone to mockery and so too maybe is also Canaan. Remember, this curse was not to his other sons. Ham has four sons. And Canaan being, it looks like, was the youngest son, and so he curses Canaan, which means the other three were not cursed. Now, the reason why this is also important is because some may want to make this into an issue regarding race, that for some people think that Noah had three sons of different races, and that is not the case. He did not have three sons who were from different races. They came from the same mother and father. They looked the same. Now, their descendants may have settled in different places, which you would then obviously see a difference in the skin color and hue and so forth, and then obviously the difference in culture. But when we see where their children migrated, we have descendants of Ham that also migrated up north as well, with the other brothers. And so therefore it would be unlikely and wrong headed to state that this is some sort of racial issue. And again, of all the four sons that Ham has, only one was cursed. And now regarding Canaan, there is an important question that we're gonna ask and then answer in just a second. But one of the issues that maybe Noah saw was that he was behaving in a way that is Canaan as well as his father in a way similar to maybe Cain and his descendants behaved prior to the flood who were full of debauchery and sin. And so his people were just that way as well. And so do we see the same thing with Canaan and his descendants? Well, we absolutely do. Now, let's just be clear. They're not the only ones with sin. It was not just Canaan's whose family or whose descendants were full of sin, but again, all of them ended up inheriting this bloodline of sin. And so we could not say it was just them, but the curse that they would be servants of his brothers that does bear out because remember the land that God shows to Abraham to go to is where this land of Canaan. Now, does this mean that all of the Canaanites would suffer under this curse and that all of them would be uh, servants to their brothers? Well, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, we see that God has a plan, not just for just the one group that is Israel, but for everyone. Remember someone vitally important in this whole lineage of Israel going into the land of Canaan. There were two spies that came back with the favorable report as God sends out these, or as Moses sends out these 12 spies to come back with a favorable report. One is Joshua, but then also the other one is Caleb. The word Caleb in Hebrew means dog. And where does Caleb come from? Well, Caleb is not an ethnic Jew. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Joshua 14, 6, the sons of Judah drew near Joshua and Gilgai, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite said to him, now the reason why we bring that up is because the Kenizzites are Canaanites. So here we have an example of a Canaanite being involved in the lineage going forward in Israel, and so much so that he even um, lives with the with those of the tribe of Judah. And so we're going to see that those who have a Canaanite history or descendant of Canaan also are blessed as well. You think about people such as Rahab, who finds herself in Jesus's genealogy. And so God does bless not just those who are uh, of Sham and Japheth, but also those who are of Canaan or, or of Ham. The reason why we say this and the reason why we know so is because 
Remember what God says in Genesis 12, 3. He says, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. But then he makes a statement in chapter 3, in verse 3, he says, and I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. But look what he says. He says, and in you, all of the families of the earth will be blessed. This Hebrew word called Mishpachoth, which is to state that each of the different families, which has to include Canaanites. They represent portions of the families that are on the earth. And we see them getting blessed. How much so? Well, what if we told you that there was an actual apostle who was a Canaanite? In Mark 3, we see the names of the apostles. And one of the apostles we don't recognize is a Canaanite. However, if we look at, at the Greek of his word, in verse 18, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, and here it is, and Simon the Zealot. The word for zealot, though, is the word for Cananion, which is a Canaanite. And so here we have an apostle with a Canaanite heritage that is this other Simon, who is also an apostle. So the point being, though Canaan was cursed, it does not extend that every single person who was descended from Canaan is going to be cursed because God is a forgiving God. He's a loving God, and he is not wishing that any would perish, but all would come to him. And here we have a Jewish apostle who has a Canaanite heritage, who's also a part of serving the Lord Jesus. The interesting thing about this entire curse is that when Abraham, who is a descendant of Shem, goes into the Canaanite land and they are to conquer this land, they are disobedient. They do not drive out all of the inhabitants of the land, all the Canaanites out of the land and end up marrying some of them. And then we end up seeing some of them even in the genealogy of Jesus. And certainly we see a lot of them who are also brothers and sisters in Christ further on down the road. We think of someone like Simon who carried the cross for Jesus and others who have a Canaanite heritage, but are not Canaanite spiritually. They have placed their faith in Christ. They are serving the Lord. And so anyone, even descendants from this Canaanite curse, can be saved and have been saved. So to speculate all of the details behind why Canaan was cursed, what Ham actually did, was Canaan there? Well, we can't, we don't know. There's no way to actually know. And so again, it wouldn't do any good to actually speculate, but we do know this, that whatever the issue was, there is still salvation either for them as well as us today. Amen.